Good evening. Welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, February 10th, 2008. Let's jump right into it. We got a lot of stuff to cover. I got my little piece of paper right here in front of me. Uh, what's the first thing we talk about? Okay, Fibo retracement. Yes, S&P chopping around. Huge volatility, which I'll get to in a second. I took the Fibonacci off the chart, and I've just left. I just put the numbers here so you wouldn't see all the little spaghetti of the Fibo. Um, and basically, over the last week, we've danced around. Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, there was a big sell-off here on Tuesday. This is Monday, obviously. Uh, the last three days of the week, we just kind of danced around in between the 50 and the 618. So it's very hard to say right now at this juncture which direction the market's going to break because these are really key levels in terms of the Fibonacci. When I say retracement, I mean from this low over to this high. Okay, so you do figure out what the distance is between here using the Fibonacci on your charting package, you get 50% here, right at about S&P 1332, and then that 618 is right at the 1320, which so far we've held. All right, so obviously coming into this next week, we need to hold the 1320 area, or it would be a free fall more than likely below the 618 down to prior lows, okay? Now, there has been an amazingly huge increase in volatility over the last few weeks. I'm gonna get this off and switch to a weekly. Obviously, those of you that are trading intraday, you know it, you're loving it. I think it's phenomenal as well. I mean, this type of volatility during the day is just huge for day trading. But if you're more of a position trader or a longer term person, it's very, very difficult. And so I want to definitely stress that the environment that we're in right now is not an investing environment. It is a trading environment. Be very aware of that. This is a trader's environment, not an investor's environment. There's a huge difference. If you can't trade very, very short term, you will probably not be making money in this market because that is just the way it is. The size of the bars here on the S&P, notice how they've just gotten progressively larger and larger. We started to see increase in volatility in summer 07 and then more towards the end of 07 here, right? October, November, and now look at 08. It's just big, 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 big body candles every single week. So you're seeing a huge increase in volatility. Now, what does this all mean in terms of whether or not this is or is not a bottom? There's a lot of people who will tell you, and I tend to kind of agree with this, that this sort of volatility is more indicative of a market that's at a near-term bottom than at a top. And I do tend to agree with that. that. That does tend to make sense. You can go back historically and see that, that there's oftentimes huge, big swings of chop around as a market may or may not be bottoming. However, that being said, even if this, if this volatility is pointing in the direction of a near-term bottom here, and that's exactly what we're doing is we're just kind of hammering it out and cementing in the bottom, and every time we swing up, we swing back down and, and fake people out, but we never really test the prior low, you know, if that's really what's going on here. The main thing to remember is there's no money to be made in anticipating that. None. Please, this is very important. There's no money to be made in knowing this. The money is going to be made simply when the market crosses here and it's no longer going down. That's it. You don't need to get the extra cash of like picking it. Yeah, I picked it right off there at 1300, okay? Forget the 100 S&P points that are between here and here. Just forget about them. Imagine if they don't even, as if they don't even exist. If we break down below here with force, then it's the short side. Fine, okay? But, but, but you see what I'm saying? Is it a bottom? Isn't it? I don't know. All I'm saying is that this huge volatility usually points more to a bottom than to a top. Maybe it is. We'll see. If the S&P crosses back over the 1400 and holds, then we'll probably have something. We shall see. No need to anticipate. All right. Next. Given that, what do we like? First thing, coal. Coal stocks are starting to move again. DJUSCL. Uh, I do want to point out one thing here. This was on Friday's edition of the focus report. So you guys should see this. Those of you that are not subscribers to my newsletter yet, I'm gonna put this up and you can pause the video right here. And what I want you to do is I want you to read this part here. This was sent out to our subscribers on Thursday night, February 7th. And I'll just leave it at that. Those of you watching the video, you can pause and read that and then you'll see if maybe this newsletter is worth your while. It's a dollar a day. That's the type of information that we put out almost every day in the newsletter. We put it out every day and that's the type of stuff that's in there. Coal stocks are starting to move. Um, CNX we took a position in, just starting to break out. We're long CNX, which we like. Other names in the sector, MEE, 
looking good. Kind of a weird tail, though. ACI was the granddaddy. Just boom, the breakout was phenomenal. I kind of wish we had that one instead of CNX. So that looks good. But those are the stocks that were mentioned in the focus report, as you can see. Okay, steel as well. I want you guys to keep an eye on steel. The steel producers index looks to me like it's firming up. There's definitely some interest here. Uh, look at names like Axe. Don't ax me. I'm telling you. Um, you know, new core, NUE, all these breaking out, right? They look great. And then, of course, the granddaddy of all commodities, gold. And here's what I want to point out about gold. This is the weekly chart of gold. Look at what happened last week in gold. Bullish, 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 right? Up, 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 right? Strong, 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 right? But check this out. This is the euro. So if the euro did this, this is euro versus dollar. So euro collapsed here. What, what does this mean the dollar did all last week? The dollar rallied. So if the dollar rallied, why did gold rally too? It's not supposed to happen this way. This goes to show you that gold is acting really, really bullish. Okay, it's even shrugging off rises in the dollar. So that is really, really bullish, okay? That being said, we're still long gold. We still like it. Gox might, oops, not, not Sox. Sox is crap. Gox. Look at the weekly in the Gox. This is the uh, minor stocks, Amex Gold. Boom, boom. Bottoming tail hammers right at the 20, right? There's a lot of great names out there that are looking the same. ABX, which we were long of and we sold for a good profit, we're probably going to get back into off that hammer. Um, there's a bunch of them. Uh, GDX is Market Vectors, which tracks this which tracks those mining stocks. So you may be, you can buy this as a stock, as an ETF GDX. You might be interested in the GDX here on the hammer at say 49.10 once it crosses and then stop here under the 46 and a half or so. Okay, now um, that's pretty much what we like. And what is the theme here? Commodities, very simple. It's all commodity driven and that's the theme. And uh, we took a position also in DBC on Friday and look at DBC. We bought DBC close to the open on the breakout. We bought the five minute high right here and we got long DBC at 32.78. And that was in our, in our one unofficial call that we made in the newsletter right there uh, via email alert and the stock just ripped. And this is basically an ETF that tracks commodities. It's a DBC power shares commodity index. This has aluminum in it, this has gold in it, this has copper in it, I believe. All the good stuff, steel, whatever. All these uh, commodities are in there. So that's another one to be looking at. I think it still has room to run. Obviously the breakout was Friday here, but uh, there's definitely some room to run here. So commodities looks like it's it. S&P, jury's out. Remember, trader's market, not an investor's market. Please be careful out there. You need to be selective, all right? If you want to know where the names are at, what stocks you should be trading? Subscribe to our newsletter. Twenty bucks a day. www or twenty bucks a month. Excuse me, not a day. A dollar a day. www.shadowtrader.net or www.redoption.com. All right. I wish you guys good trading. Next week, uh, actually no, next we got markets closed on February eighteenth, and next week is options expiry. So it should be interesting. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and of course, as always, from all the good people in Chicago, Illinois, at the one and only Thinkorswim, I wish you good trading and good night.